Hello, and welcome back to 8-Bit Tech. Uh, today, I've got the trusty Amiga out here. I guess we're working on double 8-bit today, 16-bit. Um, the GoTech external drives, or GoTech uh, um, drives, are getting very, very popular for the Amigas, the Atari STs, that kind of stuff. And there's a conundrum with them, because with the GoTech, you can't boot off of this drive when it's mounted externally because these Amigas, unless you've got the newer version of an Amiga DOS, uh, like newer version of work, Workbench uh, 2.0, I think, or 2.1 and higher, you can then uh, boot from an external device. But on the original 1.2, 1.3 uh, Workbenches, you can't boot from the external uh, uh, GoTech or external drive, period. Um, Usually what people end up doing is they will disassemble the GoTech, take the, the uh, guts out of it, and mount it inside the drive here, pull the internal drive out, and mount it inside there with a special bracket, and then um, use it as their, their only drive. Uh, I mean, it works, but there's some drawbacks. Um, it's tough to see the the display when it's in there. Um, it's damn near impossible to use a, a rotary encoder, you know, unless you put an extender on it and it comes out through the little crack here or where you remove the eject button. So it makes it a little bit tough. But what other people have done is you can switch the even CIA, a couple pins on it, if you swap them, you can actually swap the drives within the Amiga. So you can say, hey, this is the internal, this is uh, D0, and this will be D1. Um, a couple ways of doing it. Uh, they've got a wired switcher. This would just be installed, and then you either have to hog a hole in your case, which makes me shiver thinking about that, or run the wires out somehow, but then you've got this switch that sits outside the case, and it's got to go somewhere. Now, invariably what ends up happening is it gets busted off. So then your switch is just rolling on the floor. And it's tough because if this switch gets flicked while it's on, there's a good chance you're going to kill your CIA. So what we've got is... This little adapter. What it does is it does the same thing. It swaps the drives, but it does it without any switches. It's a keyless or a switchless uh, swapper. To uh, invoke it, you just do the reset three times. So control Amiga Amiga, reset, 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 and it swaps the drives for you. Uh, it's made so that this chip here, uh, when you do that, there is no chance or possibility of shorting out those two pins that you're swapping. So, and this can be, this can be programmed so that um, your external drive is your main drive. So when you turn your machine on, this is your boot drive, your boot device, or you can program so that this is your boot device and this remains your external. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and show you how this is installed. It's actually not hard at all. Um, a novice can do this. So on your Amiga, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws that are holding the case on. Normally, I pull out the RAM before I pull the case off. Then 
the three back ones. One, two, three. Now these screws, they're a number 10 Torx. So you need a, you'll need a Torx bit to get those screws out. Once you've got them out, your case back over and this cover just pops off. Just like that. Now you gotta pull the keyboard off because you have to get the shield off because that CIA chip is right down in here. So take the keyboard off. This keyboard basically just it just sits in there. Pull your keyboard cable off. Remember when you put it back on, black to the left, purple to the right. Now some some cases there may be a screw from your keyboard grounding out to the drive or vice versa grounding the drive out to the keyboard so it's just a matter of pulling out this screw this one is actually a, uh, a Phillips head machine screw once you got that out set your keyboard off to the side and then your shield my pliers. There's little tabs. Just have to bend them up straight. And you don't want to bend these too often because they will they will snap off. So just be gentle with them. Sorry if I was blocking your view with my big elbow. So bend those up. After you get those bent up, there are four screws that hold this cover on as well. There's two over here by the expansion port, and there's two here in the front of the case. Pull the two on the expansion port. One, two. And the two on the front of the case. There we go. Once you got those out, this cover basically just pulls right off. Sometimes they'll get a little stuck around the drive here because it's a very tight fit. But yeah, that just pops off. Be very careful when you're you when you're pulling this off. This stuff is sharp and it will cut you to the bone. And there we are. There's the CIA chip there. Okay. Let me move you in a little bit closer. You can see what we're doing here. Okay, there we are, a little bit closer. Let's get a little bit closer. Enhance, enhance. Okay, that should be good. So the CAA chip, the even CAA chip, it's underneath all this. So unplug the power cable from the drive, unplug your data cable, it just pulls straight off. Once you do that, let's pull that off there too. So there it is. There's your even CAA chip and it's marked even CAA, odd CAA. So this is the one that you want to pull out. Pull her out. Once it's out, you take your three reset boot selector switch. You put your CIA back in there. So you line up the notches and as well, you'll see there's a notch here that lines up with the notch in the motherboard. Put your chip in there, make sure she's snapped in. Put this one back into the CIA holder there. Hook up your data cable. Make sure when you put this data cable back on you don't get it all skewed because you can mount them too many pins this way or too many pins that way. 
Make sure you're centered on there. Hook your power back up to your floppy drive. Right now, this is programmed so that this is your main boot drive. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're not gonna put it back together, we're gonna put the keyboard back on it and I'll show you how it works. Unenhance, unenhance. Okay, let's temporarily put this thing together and we'll see how it works. Video, power, sound. Bumps. tech and last but not least keyboard purple to the right back to the left okay now it's back together click it on and you'll see this swapper, it's coded, programmed currently to use the inter internal drive as the primary drive. So it's loading from the primary drive. We've all seen that load before. So to switch over to my external drive, do the reset, control, Amiga Amiga, one, two, three. Resets the machine. And this now becomes the primary drive. So what we'll do is we'll load a two disc game and you'll see that it loads completely off of this drive. And you can swap back and forth between internal and external drive at any point. When you want to use that drive, hit the reset three times and it switches back to that one. It's going to come up here and it's going to ask for disk 2 here right away. Disk 2. Turn disk 2 of 2. My mouse button. It's going to load track 1. And it's going to ask for disk 1 again. We'll swap back to disk 1 and then the game will start. You can see it's loading the track off of disk 2 currently. Apparently it's a big track because it's taken forever. Come on. Disc one. Switch back to disc one. 
Boss button. And there we go. Pretty straightforward. Now, if I want to go back to the internal drive, reset again. You can also do it without the three reset. If you push and hold the three for four Mississippi's, four seconds, then it'll automatically reset to the opposite drive that it's currently set to. See? Now it's the internal drive. If I want to go back to here, push and hold, one in Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. And it's back to the external drive. So that's pretty much it. Once she's in, button her back up again, and you can use the GoTech for a lot more stuff now because it, it just opens up an entire new world. And with the, the GoTech externally, you can see it. It's there, you can read it, it's very easy to read. And uh, yeah, it just makes it a joy. So I hope you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, I will uh, put down in the comments where you can get that uh, uh, boot selector uh, board and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, um, stay healthy, stay humble, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.